Hi, church family. Uh, I just wanted to encourage you with God's word. Over the last couple of weeks, we've kind of looked at a few different themes. Some of the devotionals have been kind of one-off. Some of them have been for your encouragement. Some of them have followed the, the theme from Sunday. Um, but uh, I was noticing as I was thinking about what, uh, what we've done and what we haven't that uh, a couple of weeks ago, I walked you through Psalm 1. Uh, a couple of days ago, I walked you through Psalm 2. So I just thought I'd, I'd keep us going. Uh, and I would encourage you to spend a lot of time in the Psalms, especially right now with everything that's going on, to, to keep heart. Uh, the Psalms were, were written as, uh, as sort of an outlet for David. Uh, they were written as uh, war songs of the church, as uh, songs of the soul, and uh, they've comforted many, many Christians who have come before us who have been going through much more difficult times than we have or that we are currently. Um, so uh, anyway, Psalm 3 is a great psalm. It says, O Lord, how many are my foes. Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. And I'll just pause there for a minute. We might not always be able to relate to David when, we, when he talks about foes, when he talks about enemies, because so often it seems like he's talking about those in military terms or in somebody trying to usurp his throne or all that kind of stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, an enemy is an enemy. Right now, one of the enemies that we have is, is uh, this coronavirus that still seems to be running rampant in the, in the culture around us. Uh, another one is uh, some of the, um, those who are um, exporting fear because of it. Uh, many other of those are, are those who are um, uh, coming up with very ungodly and unbiblical solutions for how we fight that virus. So we have lots of enemies right now. Some of you, your enemies happen to be um, job loss and those sorts of things. But whatever it is that's trying you, whatever it is that's, that's sort of coming after your faith, tempting you to, to uh, discredit the promises of God or not believe God and his word, those, those are your enemies. And so think in those terms as you're reading the Psalms. Um, verse 3, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me my glory and a lifter of my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. With you, you break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. And so this, uh, this psalm kind of gives us a couple of things that I think are important for us to recognize. Number one, I love the phrase, um, O Lord, you are a shield about me, my, glo uh, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I mean, how many of us right now, maybe because we're quarantined, maybe because we can't be around loved ones, maybe because we're, we're, we're battling fear, maybe because we've lost jobs, maybe whatever the case might be, um, how many of us, our faces are downcast, our heads are hanging low, we're, we're, we're sullen, or, or uh, we're just not dealing well with this. Whatever the case might be, God is the lifter of our heads. He's the one who commands joy. He's the one who tells us to be joyful in all circumstances. He's the one who tells us to be reminded of the joy of our salvation. He is the lifter of our heads. So don't let your faces be downcast. Don't let your heads hang low. You trust in the God of heaven and earth. Your, the creator of the whole world is your father. He's using his power and his providence and his sovereignty for your good, even in the midst of all of these difficult circumstances. So don't let your head look down. Don't let your eyes be downcast. Let God be the lifter of your head by trusting in his promises. And then the other thing I love is it says, I lay down and I slept and I woke again and the Lord had sustained me. In other words, even in the fear, even in the anxiety, even in the worry about all the enemies, even in the worry of all those things, God is sustaining me. Even when I do nothing, I'm sleeping, God is sustaining me. He's the one who's working all things together for your good. And then the other part, the, the kind of last part I'll point out to you is when it says in verse seven, arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek and you break the teeth of the wicked. It's actually calling for the Lord to arise. It's, it's calling the Lord to action. Now, now, we don't command the Lord. He's not a genie. He's not um, uh, someone who can be invoked with the right words or magical words or anything like that. But, but the psalmist is showing us that what we can do is pray and ask for the Lord to fight on our behalf. Pray and ask the Lord to do things in our world, in our lives, that we ought to be doing that. 
And it doesn't mean that we command the Lord, it's that we ask the Lord as the one who's promised to use all of his good and all of his providence and all of his power and all of his sovereignty for your good. So remember those things. Don't let your faces be downcast. Don't let your head droop with sorrow. The God of heaven and earth is your Father. He is working all things together for good. So muster up some joy and praise Him. Hope that's helpful. May the Lord be with you.